Hey everyone, my name is Luke and welcome to my channel and welcome to part 5 of my new tutorial series aimed at beginners to Pixinsight. Throughout the course of this particular tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at processing some one-shot colour duo narrowband data, taken through an Optolong L Extreme in this case, and a 2600 MC Pro. The target chosen is actually data I took last year through my Spree 120 on the Pelican Nebula, and uh, rather than taking a look in particular any of the alternate ways to process this kind of data, such as the Hubble palette approximations, those tutorials I came out with a little while back, we will be taking a look at more of those in the future. This particular one is going to be focused entirely on taking a look at this data in its most plain and natural form, as not all targets lend themselves too well to being given that kind of treatment that we just talked about a moment ago. So. If you want to follow along with this tutorial, I'm going to be providing this data and the tool set that we're going to be using uh, throughout this entire edit. And you will need just two other tools aside from that if you want to uh, work side by side with me. So you'll need either Star Exterminator or Starnet 2. One of those is absolutely fine. Uh, the Starnet 2, that's completely free. Star Exterminator, like I'm using, is paid software in this case and you will also need the easy processing suite again links for all this is just going to be in the description box down below and instructions for installation are found at the respective sites it's all quite straightforward stuff uh, so shouldn't pose a stumbling block to anybody looking to get started in this so without any further ado let's jump straight into this and you can process along in tandem with me so uh, if you download the data that i've provided the little zipped file you should see there's two different uh, files in there so we've got the actual data itself I'll just drag and drop that in there and you'll see another one called tutorial process icons just drag that onto your PixInsight window if it doesn't automatically place these icons up there for you then you might want to right click and click arrange icons and that should bring them all into view on the main workspace for you but assuming you've got those visible now we can actually start working on this and the first thing we're going to want to do is make this so we can actually see what's going on as it's just currently mainly just black with some dots of stars so to do that i'm going to double click stf which is a screen transfer function and we're just going to hit the little nuke icon and see what we can see so in this case you can see just a little bit of the pelican nebula right there you can't really tell what's going on that's absolutely fine in this case you can just unlink the stretch hit the nuke icon once again and as you can see now we can really kind of make out what's going on in this image you can see color casts a lot of other issues that need tackling but we'll do them one by one and uh, we're going to work our way through it now one of the first things i'm noticing on this particular image is there aren't really any stacking artifacts and that's not common uh, i'm not sure if this is how i saved it back in the day but just for the sake of talking you through what you will normally have to do 99 percent of times you are going to have to perform a small crop on any image you just started to process so you'll do that with the dynamic crop tool you notice i just double clicked it and it brings up this tool from there you can drag the edges in everything that's highlighted in that kind of milky white is going to remain after the crop and everything else is going to be rejected so once you're happy with the crop that you've selected just hit execute and that's it we've now got a cropped image so you can go ahead close down dynamic crop and at this point, I think we want to perform a background neutralization. So the best way to do this, I find, is to highlight a small preview. So to do that, you're going to want to press Alt and N at the same time on your keyboard. You'll notice my mouse icon has just changed right there. And you want to select then an area that's going to represent kind of background space gray, space black kind of colors. So you wouldn't want to be selecting, let's say, the nebula or the brighter parts over here, but instead somewhere around about here would be perfect and you kind of draw this preview box once you've pressed alt n in the first place by holding onto your left mouse button and just kind of dragging out a small box try to avoid uh making a preview on bright features such as stars and nebula and things like that and you should be absolutely fine and good to go so now i've got a preview to work with i want to hit process excuse me and go to color calibration background neutralization see i already had it uh, selected right there so preview number one you'd have to select that yourselves and just hit apply once that's finished you can close that down you'll have to again uh re-stretch it you can at this point re-link the stretch just by selecting the little chains icon right there hit the nuke icon again and once again 
we're now taking a look at a good representation of this data. It's still completely linear. It hasn't really been stretched. If you see, I just cancel the SDF. It goes back to uh, to normal completely. But we are still trying to uh, see what it is that we're working on. So the next problem I can identify in this image, I would say, is uh, there's a small gradient across it. So uh, to tackle this particular gradient, I'm going to use dynamic background extraction. Just double click that icon with the window that you want to work on selected and uh, it should bring up this kind of quadranted effect and now you can choose the correction so in most cases I've ever done it's going to be a subtraction and I like to discard the model as it's just kind of confusing to see sometimes unless you're trying to uh, figure out where your DB is going wrong just generally throw that away you don't really need to see it so just selecting now areas of the image that represent the actual background I'm just gonna keep tapping the left mouse button in all of those darker spots so I'm being careful not to place them let's say in around lighter nebula just like that background preview uh, I'm instead focusing on placing them around all the darker spots in the image this should teach it what the background we actually want to uh, extract should look like so uh, at that we can go ahead hit the tick box re nuke and it looks like all that gradient largely has been dealt with so at this point I'm going to close down dynamic background extraction close down the original image we don't need that kind of clutter on the screen right now so we've got one image on the screen just the DBE uh, background neutralized cropped image now the next thing I'm gonna to want to do to this is actually change the orientation I'm not happy with it in this uh, kind of view it looks upside down to how I'm used to viewing the, uh, the the nebula itself not that really in space there is any upside down or right side up but this is how I like it and it's a perfect opportunity to teach you that you can rotate things to uh, how you want them so process geometry and fast rotation is what I'm going to use for this. Now I just want it simply 180 degrees rotated. That's the kind of view I'm used to seeing and I want to continue processing along that kind of vein. Now the next issue I'm noting with this particular image is there's kind of a background green cast. Now the perfect way to get rid of this generally speaking is SCNR. Subtractive Chrominance Noise Reduction. And if you can just see now I've applied that hopefully this is coming across for you on YouTube I'll just undo and redo that green cast that was present has been really neatly taken care of so it's at this point we've got a nicely calibrated image and we can actually continue on with the next phase of processing which generally speaking is going to be a last minute linear noise reduction right before taking it into the non-linear phase of processing so uh, to do that if you're using free software you're gonna to go to script easy processing suite and easy denoise make sure TGV denoise itself is ticked to run just hit run the easy denoise and wait five minutes or so and it should work its way through this image and you'll end up with a nicely noise reduced image that you can then take into the non-linear phase because I'm using noise exterminator for the purposes of this tutorial and saving me a little bit of time it's the processing software I often use I won't be using that but pretend that I have if you're following along with this instead now I'm going to move on to the next step which is taking this image into the non-linear so we're going to go once again back into scripts easy processing suite and easy soft stretch I really like this tool it kind of gives the kind of stretch that I would be looking at creating myself manually using the histogram tool but it just saves an absolute bunch of time because you're not having to work your way iteratively through a bunch of uh, kind of small incremental movements. Now, that's looking pretty good to me already. Uh, of course, if you'd run denoise at this point, you'd have a, a less noisy image than I have. Um, and I think the next kind of thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is start to enhance these dark structures, such as these kind of filamentary details around here. And there's a perfect tool for that included in PixInsight. So we go to scripts once again, utilities this time, I'm going to go to dark structure enhance now you can fine-tune this just a little bit I tend to run it at defaults unless I find a need to uh, adjust which is rare if I'm being quite honest with you in uh, most of the processing jobs 
I've done, it's never really needed changing. And uh, wait a moment, and as you can hopefully see, I'll just cycle back and forth for the sake of demonstration. Undo and redo. Really has done a fantastic job. I love that script. Works. Um, does exactly what it says on the tin. And who could want for more than that? Now, I think the next phase for me is going to be to take these stars out momentarily while we work on the background nebula. So to do that, depending on which software you've got for uh, star removal, in my case, Star Exterminator, you may be using StarNet. You're going to want to open up the tool. In my case, I'll be clicking Generate Star Image. I think it's called Create Star Mask, the equivalent setting in uh, StarNet. And just drag and drop it over to the image and wait for that to complete. Okay, so Star Exterminator has just got finished there and it looks like it's done a mostly perfect job. There's just some small remnants uh, left in this image. I could probably get rid of them by using the latest AI, but it takes a little bit longer to run on my PC. And for the sake of uh, keeping this tutorial brief for me as well as for you, uh, I've just run it as is and we're gonna continue on now. This is what we want to see. Ideally, we want an image that contains just the stars. I'm just going to right click that, go to the identifier and change it to something super simple. So stars and an image that contains everything but the stars. So in this case, the rest of the image, the nebula. Again, identifier, starless, super simple. Who could forget that? And now at this point, we can make extra manipulations to this just to make it pop that little bit more without any fear of making the stars in the image kind of go nuclear and start to look crazy, um, which would make them really hard to reduce after the fact. Now, for me, I'm going to do most of this without any masks and just the curves transformation tool. So I'm double clicking curves with this main window selected. I'm going to open up a preview window. And just on the RGBK itself, so that's kind of all the channels, I'm going to boost the the mids ever so slightly right there and drop the shadows. Not too far to crush them, you see, but also it does need a little bit of work to kind of make them uh, extra contrasty, make this nebula look like a, uh, a violent, fiery place, which it probably is. Um, at least full of radiation and awful things. You wouldn't want to visit it, but it's pretty to look at. <laughs> now, that's looking uh, pretty darned cool, I would say. It's certainly brought a lot of contrast into this image just for one really very simple S curve adjustment. So I'm happy at that. I'll apply that. I don't want to take it that extra step because that's starting to crush the, uh, the blacks in this image. And uh, I'd really rather have a subtle effect then it looked completely overdone now just for the sake of just the reds in the image i'm going to select the red channel only get a fresh preview going and just boost them up ever so slightly i'm not worried about an s curve for this you will have to experiment on your own image uh, as to see how this kind of comes out for you you may not even need this adjustment at all um but for me just cycling through that preview back and forth it's certainly bringing out some of these darker kind of regions up there and they're looking extremely interesting uh this is one of those targets i think that aside from any uh sho or false sho approaches it can look just really really nice naturally presented like this now now that's effectively done and taken care of we can simply put the stars back in but before we do that while we've got it in this starless state i am just going to drag this tool over here that you should have called clone for starless just over this image just for one moment now you'll notice we've got two versions of it now one with a capital s for stylus and one with the lowercase like i call it or whatever you wanted to call it now i'm going to put the stars back in the image the main one so process pixel math and just go create a new image and stylus plus stars so that's the expression we're going to use extremely simple so i'll basically add these two together stars and stars so we're back to that version of the image now, just with the colors boosted, as we mentioned. And now because we created that clone, the last moment, nothing's changed in the image except for the stars going back in it. We can perform our star reduction on this thing. Uh, it's a little bit of a time saving skip. You don't have to do that. Uh, but I thought, why not mention it for anybody following along directly with this? Now, pick one of your star reduction methods. By all means, try all three out, but for the sake of keeping this as brief as possible, 
Uh, I'm just going to go with number one there. That looks absolutely fine to me. You can see the effect it's had. If we just go back and forth. We've got a little bit of an issue around these stars, but we knew that was going to be a problem after that slightly failed star uh, removal process. But hopefully you can see that we've kind of gone from nothing nothing really much to look at to a nicely presentable image i would say um so it's time for just a finishing touch now for me this is going to be some noise reduction i like to perform this last minute because as i mentioned i've got access to some premium tools very luckily for me so uh, noise exterminator in this case is what i'm going to use um oftentimes i'd export this out and perform the noise reduction in topaz because it does a really fantastic job even if it is just slightly more involved to use than noise exterminator um i like to have both um i, I do some terrestrial photography too so uh, that's where topaz fits in if you want to buy that software yourselves by the way if you've ever you know if you know what it is and you have any interest in it i do have an affiliate link in the description box down below and that really helps my channel now uh, we'll just wait for this to finish just a moment and that should be about the end of the tutorial so i'll uh wrap things up all right that's done a uh, pretty damn good job and i think because this really is just aimed at being an absolute basic tutorial uh, i'm gonna leave things round about there hopefully you can see how we've gone through all the different problems that were present in this image tackled them one by one and now we've got a nice presentable image at the end and uh, I hope this has been useful to some of you guys out there maybe you've never processed one shot color dual narrowband data before and uh, this might help you decide if this is the kind of thing you want to pursue any further or not. But um, thanks very much for watching, as always, and giving you support. I really do appreciate each and every single one of you guys out there. So um, with that said, anyway, I'll keep this simple, keep this sweet, and just say thanks so much for watching. And I look forward to speaking to you all in the next one. Look after yourselves and clear skies.